I'd like to talk to you today, explain a bit about um, how we at Souktel have leveraged basic mobile phone technology to facilitate election monitoring in Tunisia, in Libya, and uh, Ahmed already spoke about Egypt, but we've done a little bit of, of work in Egypt as well. Okay, just a brief overview of who we are at Souktel. Uh, we were founded in 2006. We are a group of Palestinians, Americans, and Canadians. We're based in Ramallah, Palestine. And we operate in 15 countries now, as Sharif mentioned. Uh, we create highly customized uh, mobile platforms, which are both web and phone accessible. And in partnership with mobile operators across the MENA region, uh, we've leveraged basic mobile phone technology uh, to implement health, civil society and governance projects, um, emergency response projects, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So why mobile phones? Well, we at Sukta, we emerged uh, from a perceived need to connect aid organizations with vulnerable populations. So and what, what's the best way of doing this? What's the best way to get information to and from communities in need. And as you can see from mobile phone subscription and penetration rates, nearly everybody, nearly everybody has a mobile phone, right? Um, and if you compare that with current internet penetration rates, I know that people, uh, I'm sure Facebook in particular, likes to attribute the Egyptian revolution to their services. But I mean, at the end of the day, the reality is that most people have a mobile phone. And really only a third of people, especially in the developing world, have consistent access to internet. OK, so I'm going to talk about, we have four services that we provide um, to facilitate election monitoring. And I'm going to talk in more detail about those as I go through the presentation and talk a little bit about our case studies. Um, the first service that we have uh, or is an SMS alert service. So let's say that you want to send out um, messages about what the voter registration process is, or um, you want to promote a national dialogue event that you, you want people to attend. Or um, well, those are just some of the examples that you could send mass, we call them bulk alerts, bulk SMS alerts, to uh, segmented um, like lists of beneficiaries. We also have SMS and IR, IVR surveys. Um, so you can conduct opinion polls. You can get real-time feedback from citizens. What, are their take, what is their take on, um, I'll talk about this when, when I discuss Libya. What are their thoughts on the elections? Um, and the third service that we do is we call an audio library service. So we can set up a hotline where, especially illiterate users, can call into this hotline. And ideally, it would be a reverse charge uh, setup so that they don't have to pay to use the service. That's the ideal situation. So they would call into this hotline. And using a touch tone menu, they would be able to select a variety of um, pre-recorded audio lessons. So we implemented this. It was a, a pretty big success in Somalia. And we implemented this across all three regions. Uh, so involved a bit of work with the, the various mobile operators in uh, Puntland and uh, Somaliland, South Central Sudan. It was, it, it was very time intensive, but it was pretty awesome. People could call in, and if they wanted to he hear more information about the constitution writing process, call in. Uh, the touchstone menu is it's, please select one if you would like to hear more about uh, the, the drafting process. So and then they would call in. They, they, they um, sorry, they'd press one, and they would hear this pre-recorded message. Uh, and finally, the Electoral Incidents Database allows citizens to text in on election day. They would be able to text into this number. And again, ideally, it would be a reverse charge. So they're not going to, either they're going to pay the standard rate of a text message or any balash, nothing at all. So in Tunisia, in October 2011, we partnered with the American Bar Association and the Tunisian Bar Association. And uh, we created a very customized web platform that enabled citizens to, as I mentioned, to text into this hotline. And they could report incidents of electoral fraud. Uh, 
what was really cool about this, though, was that all messages that came into the system, and I'll show you an illustration of this in a second, um, were all the messages that came in were then tagged, classified according to level of importance, or lawyers could also view the responses and tag them according to geographic region if they wanted to. Um, and then the lawyers that they had access to this web platform, they could respond immediately to these complaints. And they would claim them too. So you don't want, if you have, we had a team, I believe it was 80 lawyers that were working on this. So they would view incoming responses and they not only would classify the responses, but they would also claim them. You wouldn't want more than one lawyer um, following up on the same incident, right? You would, you would want, each one would claim one, say, okay, I'm gonna work on this, and they'd be able to follow up accordingly. So I have a little illustration of how this worked. So after, so Suktel works to set up connectivity. So we set up the hotline, we work with mobile operators in the country. Um, as I mentioned, we ideally would not want citizens to have to pay to use the service. Once we establish connectivity, there are multiple ways of promoting the service. Uh, one way is to send out, as I said, a promotional alert. So a mass, a, an SMS blast to how many thousands of numbers you can get. You can send a, pro a promotional alert, as I've mentioned here. Uh, notice anything strange during the elections, send an SMS to 35353 to report any incident you witness on election day. You can also uh, leverage traditional media outlets. You can use radio, you can reach out to TV stations and advertise this number so that people can text in on election day. So that's, that's step one, is getting the information out there that people can use this service. Okay, step two. And I, I, I alluded to this already, but once, mess once people start texting into the system, those messages are available on a web platform. So the team of lawyers has real-time access to reports coming in. I believe they received about 1,000 in total. Um, and so the there was a team of 80 lawyers. They could respond immediately to those messages. And something else I want to stress is that only the mobile number is available. So you, wanna, you still want to preserve that level of anonymity um, you don't want people to feel like they're going to be persecuted for reporting an incident of election fraud. So I, I think that's key, that, that people feel they can participate in the electoral process in a way that they feel um, it is safe, they feel protected. And so this is an illustration then of, um, I don't know how clear that is or if you can read any, that's basically the message, uh, the, re the reporting panel. So you can see the time the message comes in, uh, the outgoing reply, they generally get like a thank you for responding, we'll look into this. Uh, and there will be a way, it's custom, the platform is customized in a way that um, lawyers can indicate whether or not they've responded to the, to the um, complaint yet. And as I said, you, they can claim it so that only one lawyer is responding to one complaint. You wouldn't want... Um, like people not wasting their time, but you, you wouldn't want like three lawyers responding to the same complaint. You want to wait. There's so many. If there's so many responses coming in, you want to deal with that as time effectively as possible. Okay, and in the instance where they do need to follow up with the respondent to follow up with the mobile user, they can do that. They can then call the person to get more information. What exactly happened at the polling station? Um, where exactly? You know, where exactly are you? So, and you can see here, I have. The, the cycle sort of here. So you have a person who texts in, I tried to register to vote, but the election official will not put me on the list. That message is received. You can view it in the, in the web platform. Um, and then if, if the, the need arises, um, lawyers can reach out directly to those people. So that was, that was Tunisia in 2011. Uh, a second project we did in partnership with Al Jazeera uh, was in the lead up to the elections on July 7th of 2012. Al Jazeera wanted to get frank and honest feedback from citizens in Libya. Uh, and so the question they asked was, Al Jazeera would like to know, will you take part in the July 7th elections and why? What do you hope to achieve? 
Uh, and this was really for, for a lot of Libyans the first time that they could safely, and again without fear of persecution, contribute to, to a healthy debate about, you know, about, about the elections. Uh, so Al Jazeera ended up getting 5,000 responses from citizens. And as you can see, uh, we were able to create a way to map responses for them. So if you, were, if you were to hover over one of these dots, you can see uh, the response, as well as if the person chooses, if they choose to put their name and location, they could do that as well. And only, um, only if people responded with their location could it obviously be put on a map. But again, I, I, I want to stress that this is another uh, way to safely contribute to, to the national dialogue in a way that um, people didn't feel like they were going to be hounded down later. Uh, and we did, I know Ahmed touched um, on, on their work in, in Egypt. What we did in Egypt, targeting mainly women and youth, and this is also in 2012, uh, is really a hodgepodge of all these services that we provide, we, we provided in Egypt. So um, targeting specifically women and youth, we sent informational alerts to inform them about the voting process, the registration process. Um, we can provide informational alerts, can be either SMS, or we also have uh, the option of doing voice technology for you, voice response technology. So um, for example, they could either text into a hotline or sorry, they would either receive an SMS informational alert. There's even a way to send a voice message to, to, call, on, to call a list of, of people, um, and they would receive a voice message instead of a, a, a text message. For, again, if you're trying to target illiterate communities. Uh, we also implemented an SMS opinion uh, and, and surveys component. And the idea there was to hear back from 60,000, the target was 60,000 women and youth to get their feedback on the electoral process. And finally, as in Tunisia, we provided a text in hotline for people to report electoral fraud and any sort of irregularities. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs>